And so for us to start this in earnest, we're going to pray.
an echo word. You're welcome. I can see hands in the back. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you're all welcome. If Dr. Richard Mona, the regional coordinator of climate change in Africa, you know. Dr. Peter Tava, UNCCC representative of Nigeria in Focal Point, the director of climate change in terms of environment, my brother, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my pleasure, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome you all and give the opening speech at his first ever Sahara Nigeria Food Security and Family Residence Day. Considering the various challenges, climatic and non climatic, the pressure impact and uncertainty in both climate projections and socioeconomic drivers in Western Nigeria is focusing on increasing the resilience of agricultural production, the increasing soil moisture holding capacity, for example, conservation tillage and soil erosion protection measures, such as services and bonds. Enhancing farmers' socioeconomic buffer capacities will entail increasing their livelihood assets in ways that provide them with necessary human, financial, social, physical, and natural capitals by improving their access to market information and the new ICT in one-stop shop. Ebola has a robust adaptation implementation framework it's also based on information available from vulnerability and impact assessment that seeks to determine the extent with different communities, ecosystems and natural resources are likely to be affected by climate change. The adaptation options will combine amalgamation of ecosystem-based adaptation-driven agriculture with clean energy other skill projects. This will lead in the few skill projects to demonstrate the framework and capacity needed to reduce the intensity of modified impacts. This ecosystem approach to climate adaptation will surely contribute to the reducing climate change impacts, diminishing the vulnerability of people, promoting our cultural markets, minimizing of or eliminating distortions in agricultural policies that will establish climate change impacts, enhancing social protection and microfinance and infrastructure. The Professor Nigeria, first school food security and climate residence day team, bringing a value chain for food security and wealth creation, took to cognizance the need that as Nigeria agricultural sector is upscaling, that one of us are going to production. The federal government has announced massive production, each states are keen to eat. But all these things are to be caution. We want to avoid months. In the end, the production area of, of value addition also your skill to to avoid storage, to avoid wastage. For example, 75% of the food we produce and invested in Nigeria is being wasted. Furthermore, we should take advantage of this to create employment for our youth, increase our GDP, and also contribute to climate change mitigation by driving value addition with renewable energy so that we can contribute to our national retirement contribution. NDCs in line with the Paris Agreement to reduce emissions by 26% below the business as usual, EAU, by 2030. With this, finance can be attracted to Green Bond, which is an innovative and alternative resource of funding projects that will reduce emissions and provide robust climate infrastructure in it. In practical terms, Ebosa Nigeria has initiated nice times to be never Ebosa Nigeria ecosystem-based adaptation driven agriculture Cassava value chain pilot scheme. As we go along in this program today, all these 
shall be unveiled to us in details. I am confident that we are, we are embarking on a landmark journey that will make us tackle food insecurity, life in challenges in the region of many our country of importation. I wish to express my profound appreciation to stakeholders, MDAs, CSOs, private sectors, organizations, our development partners, and everyone here to face this occasion. While wishing all of us a successful, fruitful celebration and celebration, on behalf of the Boston and Nigeria team, we appreciate your presence. On this note, I want to thank you and God for the rest. Thank you all. I told you before now that Dr. Richard is one man that you, as he comes, you understand what I had said about him in the introduction. Put your hands together as we receive the person of Dr. Richard Mulan. The representative of the Honorable Minister of State, Dr. Peter Taffa, my big brother, my friend, all government representatives, the president of the Baposa Nigeria National Branch, bureau members, the secretariat of the Baposa National Branch, representatives of the media, distinguished guests, respected colleagues, all protocol observed, as they say, in Africa. It is a great pleasure for me to be here today to join you on this first anniversary in commemorating Ebakosa, Nigeria, moving forward. But at the same time, this anniversary today speaks to the minds and the power of unity. It speaks to the unity of purpose. As you can see on this infographic that many hands make light work. It proves that your contribution as individuals means much more when we come together to aggregate our efforts in complementarity. It speaks to the soul of Nigeria. It speaks to the soul of Africa that in fast tracking the much needed socio economic development of our own continent, we have to prioritize and maximize earnings in the agricultural sector because that is the sector that employs many people across the African continent today. And that is the way that we must go. The continent of the African continent, as you can see on this infographic, holds abundant arable land. The African continent is endowed with natural resources. The African continent is endowed with natural resources, but we must be able not to be comforted by the fact that the continent is endowed with natural resources. It's also endowed with youthful skills. What we know is that if we maximize agricultural earnings, ladies and gentlemen, the approaches we use on our farms also means a lot because destroying the very environment will mean that the agricultural production that we keep talking about will go nowhere. But the agricultural production must be nature-based. It must be working with the environment and therefore protecting the environment and enhancing the natural resources like water, natural resources like bees, which are actually the pollinators that pollinate up to about 75% of the food we depend on today is very important. Protecting the very soil among others, which are the foundations that continuously help us to produce is something that we cannot take for granted. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, working on the farm is not enough. What we need to do today is that we must directly link what we produce on the farm to add value to it. Working on the farm is not enough. And therefore, if we don't add value to what we produce, we never earn higher earnings. And given that value addition needs energy, it is very important that we prioritize the energy source, the resources that the African continent has in abundance today. And we do so in a way that we do not pollute the environment. We do so in a way that we do not actually affect the health of the environment and the health of the people that the environment harbors. Right here in Nigeria and also in the African continent, the continent holds a global advantage in clean energy resources. It is these resources that we must prioritize and we must develop. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, based on these very simple aspects that I've mentioned today, farming is not enough. Integrating nature based agriculture with clean energy development as, as a complementarity and linking these to markets and ensuring that there is a common standard.
that control what we produce is very, very important. That these actions in the agricultural sector and also in the clean energy is what we call Africa's catalytic sectors. These are the sectors that are not just inclusive. But the sector we have an abundance, but we keep talking about abundance and talking about potential. Potential doesn't feed anybody. Potential has been talked for 60 years in the African continent today, and in 2017 we cannot keep talking about them. This is what Africa should start focusing on, its catalytic sector, which Nigeria and Africa shares in abundance. Yes, Honorable representative of the Honorable Minister of State, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our actions are important, our skills are important, our talents are important, our networks are important, our partnerships are important, and what we have at our disposal called good physical and non-physical resources can actually drive the transformation of this sector in such a way that we have never seen before in this African continent. And this is the premise of what we call innovative volunteerism. And this is what this National Day of Ibaposa, climate resilience and food security is all about. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, are, we have to be comforted by an African proverb that goes on, that two arms do not fail to pull one grasshopper. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, two arms do not fail to pull one grasshopper. And even if it fails to pull one grasshopper, but us coming together, we may be able to pull more. Mm. And if there was a time for us to gather, if there was a time for us to gather, it is now. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, what we know is that in the life of any continent, anywhere in the world there exist decisions upon which the continent, the future of a continent or a country depends. And recognizing that there is a time to gather stones, and also a time to scatter them, represents the turning point of a continent or a country. For example, right here in the African continent, monumental decisions that were made by our founding fathers set the continent towards the path of self-determination. Right here in the African continent, those decisions gave us the life that we enjoy today in our own respective countries. In the United States of America, the signing of the Declaration of Independence established the ideals and the goals that build America today. In Europe, the Renaissance movement, a decision to focus on intellectual and cultural development, set the foundation to building the modern Europe. But right here today, the 24th of November 2017, are convening under the ecosystem based adaptation of food security assembly, a BAFOSA, in engaging our skills, our professional and personal networks, our partnerships, among other resources, at our own disposal today towards maximizing the productivity of the agro value chain, towards maximizing the catalytic sectors of the African continent today, is surely the transformational decision of our time. This is a transformational decision of our time because the challenges are so many. And in 2017, we cannot be talking about challenges that we've talked about 60 years ago. We have to be talking about solutions. We have to be talking about world creation, not poverty reduction, because poverty reduction will not play well. We have to be talking about what we have in abundance, our skills, our talent, what we call human capital. And this is the essence of our discussion here today. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, as we speak here today, we are two years into the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goal. We are two years into the implementation of the climate of the Paris Climate Change Agreement that Nigeria ascribes to just as many African countries have done to ensure that we achieve food security, to ensure that we can put poverty on the run and prosperity into the conflict of food aid, to ensure that we can create worlds for the unemployed youth across the continent and at the same time protect the very environment in which we live in. To these colleagues, while these goals, the sustainable development goals are not goals, we are faced with challenges that would render these goals a distant dream. We are faced with climate change, which is already redefining the contours of our very continent today and affecting so many in the continent and already even forcing people to seek sanctuary in places not their home. And climate change will cause agricultural production to reduce by up to about 40%. We are faced as a continent with food insecurity. We are faced as, as a continent with people, 240 million people going to be hungry in a continent that have abundance. What, what a continent sometimes is with abundance. There are so many people going to be hungry. This should worry us. And today that discussion should worry us more because of the continent, ecological degradation is costing this continent 68 billion US dollars every year. That literally means almost about 193 million US dollars goes down the drain every day. That should worry us. 
One should also worry us is that those have as losses as we speak today are costing the African continent 48 billion US dollars. That is something that we should worry us. But the African continent is importing for 35 billion US dollars every year. That is exporting employment and importing unemployment. This is unacceptable. When we have food harvest losses costing the continent 48 billion, when you juxtapose 48 billion with 35 billion, the continent should not import a single bread. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this time of need, the high youth unemployment is what will define this continent. This is an insurmountable challenge. This is an insurmountable challenge in a continent where young people aged 15 to 25 years old <coughs> represent over 60 percent of the entire continent population. But 60 percent of this very group of population in the African continent today is unemployed. This paradox must be addressed. If it is left unaddressed, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the lack of opportunity among these young people will have more dramatic consequences for this continent more than ever before. And in eight years from today, as we speak, the number of Africans reaching working age will exceed the rest of the world combined. This should send not just a signal for us to start thinking about what we can harness from the energy, the vibrancy of this youth to do, but the continent today relating to the post harvest losses that I mentioned, poverty and unemployment is also a continent that has low productivity levels, 2,000 percent more than any other part of the globe. And this is 20 times lower than the developed world because of the minimal value addition to what we produce. And this is affecting the growth of industry in the African continent, translating to minimal income and job creation. Right here in Nigeria, low value addition means that the post harvest losses are costing you as a country up to about 9 billion US dollars annually, translating not only to food loss, but also translating to incomes and job opportunities along the entire supply chain. These losses occur in some of Nigeria's key agro value chain, right where Nigeria is Africa's top producer, which is up to about 56 billion naira annually. That's almost about 155 million US dollars. Tomato, where Nigeria is the world's 16 largest producer, loses 50% of the total production. Maize, where losses are up to about, costing the, the country up to about 120 <coughs> billion naira annually. That's almost about 330 million US dollars annually. And topping all of it is cassava. Where Nigeria, the top global producer, loses up to about 144 billion naira annually. That's almost 400 billion naira annually. This means that if we are just to reverse these losses, these losses across the entire value chain by integrating clean energy for processing, by ensuring that efficient information communication technology enables linkages to market and supply value chains to reverse these losses and potentially save Nigeria the 9 billion US dollars that is lost annually as a result of this post harvest losses. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, with all these challenges, we have opportunities. Because as the African poor goes, a path doesn't close with a man with a machete. No, pro no problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. It has never been because despite the fact that there are challenges anywhere in the world, people have always provided solutions for that. And because of these challenges, we should be happy that we can find those solutions. This African proverb should comfort us that a path doesn't close on a man with a machete. Africa is endowed with abundant wealth. Africa is endowed with abundant potential aligned to this catalytic sector of agriculture and clean energy. I am talking about the 65% of the uncultivated river land. I'm talking about the 10% of internal renewable fresh water. I'm talking about the best solar resource on earth, right here in the African continent, where, for example, here in Nigeria, Nigeria can generate up to about 600,000 megawatts of solar electricity from 5% conversion efficiency devices deployed on just 1% of the land mass. I'm talking about the entire agro value chain, which if tapped today could actually <coughs> generate an agro economy worth one trillion US dollars in less than 13 years from today. I'm talking about a 300 million strong and growing middle class that is demanding value added and differentiated agro products, representing a significant domestic market in the African continent today for the group of local products. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria, being the largest cassava producer in the world, can earn an extra 225 billion naira, that's almost 700 million US dollars, and set up to about 3.5 billion 
US dollars in its foreign reserves. These opportunities are just as good as they can be turned into action. And the African prove that the Royal Lion kills no game should actually spur us to action. It's no longer tenable to keep talking about potential in the African continent today. Africa's great potential has been talked about since the 1940s, since the 1950s. And rather than talking about potential today, it is time for us to fulfill this potential for the benefit of the present and future generations. But for this to happen, we cannot just come to meetings like this and talk about it. For this to happen, we must connect the dots. And connecting the dots can only happen within an inclusive framework. And that is how a Babasa was created. That everyone can be brought together. That everyone can be brought together without having to know Dr. Munang or Dr. Tafa or James. That all of us connected, regardless of our skills and educational level, regardless of our talents, can add more than individuals acting in silence. And this gave birth to the ecosystem best adaptation for the Chief Assembly. Ebakosa, the Citizens Assembly, the inclusive and implementation framework where everyone's skills and talent matters. The Citizens Assembly that everyone's strength can complement one another. That everyone's strength can leverage and at the same time expand opportunity to work with nature and create world for themselves and for those yet to be born. A true genius of leaving no one behind as a shrine in Agenda 2030 of the Sustainable Development Goals and also in African Union Agenda 2063 to truly create the future we want and the Africa we want. Distinguished colleague, the Bagosa is a coalition of the ruling assembly, motivated not just because of the challenges, but motivated to seize the opportunities that Africa represents and also to tap into the vibrant and youthful population whose skills, whose talents, whose professional knowledge and creativity is what, when combined, with experiences of people can actually drive Africa to where it's supposed to be. A Barbosa is premise on selflessness and accord on collectivism because selfishness has not worked, individualism has not worked, and selflessness and collectivism is what we should be talking about to drive this transformational change in the African continent today. Selflessness and collectivism represents not just how we can be able to do things, but every one of us have a part to play, a part to play individual and also through the institutions that we represent towards the realization of the desirable end goal where we all benefit in the process of transforming the agricultural sector, of expanding clean energy, of connecting to information communication technology, of connecting to market. And this is what innovative materialism is all about. Between ladies and gentlemen, Innovative volunteerism is not blind optimism. Innovative volunteerism is not just a word coined to convince people. Innovative volunteerism is already on the move. For example, a student studying law can contribute his or her skills, can contribute in, uh, his or her skills or knowledge to set up an agro industry in the course of doing so. Get so many people that can also create jobs for themselves. Innovative volunteerism is not blind optimism. A farmer through the Barbosa framework can partner with advisory service providers to implement nature-based ecosystem-based adaptation approaches. And through this, you can get to standardize your crops and have a market. This is innovative volunteerism. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, tapping into everyone's skills, tapping into everyone's network, tapping into everyone's partners, partnerships and resources, and directing these to very specific objectives to ensure that the African continent doesn't sell what it produces in its raw form, to ensure that what we produce, we use approaches that are working with nature, that on farm production is not sold in its raw form, but linked to clean energy for processing and value addition, that our operations, both on farm and off farm, are linked to financing, are linked to extension and advisory services and other key services through our mobile phones for efficiency that our products are standardized and simply put, these are the building blocks of what we call innovative volunteerism. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, innovative volunteerism is already happening across the African continent today. A number of achievements have already been recorded and have set Nigeria and, and more than 40 African countries on the cause of realizing the sustainable development goals from the coastlines of the entire African continent. As the African proverb goes, if you wish to move mountains tomorrow, 
you must start by lifting stones today. If you wish to move mountains tomorrow, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we must start by moving mountains today. When we launched Babosa Nigeria just over a year ago, our intention was to signal, the intention was to move the mountains of food insecurity. The intention was to ensure that the lions of poverty can be put on the run. The intent was to ensure that unemployment and low productivity and climate change, among others, facing Nigeria and Africa could actually be addressed through innovative volunteerism. And today we have started to lift the stones. Today we have started to lift stones so that tomorrow we can move mountains. And as we escalate through the spirit of innovative volunteerism, our efforts, we shall be able to move the mountains of food insecurity, of poverty, and combat climate change as well as we also create opportunities that the world can actually put into the pocket of millions, not poverty, into the pocket of millions. Mm -hmm. I effort to through these pillars, which are called the five pillars of the Bakosa. Our effort will be guided that when we do things not in silo, when we connect the dots, ensuring that what we produce is processed using clean energy, ensuring that even though what we produce is processed using clean energy, we can fill the policy gaps using what we call policy harmonization. Distinguished colleagues, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, all this is already happening across the African continent. From the coastline of Gambia, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Togo, Benin, and Nigeria, where we're making history today, to the savannas of Cameroon, the Democratic Republic of Congo in the Central African Republic, to the highlands of Kenya, Tanzania and the Matoke Hills of Uganda, to the savannas of Malawi, Botswana, Tanzania, all these countries already, through harnessing the spirit of innovative volunteerism, are generating the wealth of progress, helping them drive transformational change and changing the narrative across the entire African continent. We'll be able to be operationalized and make Nigeria a shining city. But when Nigeria moves, Africa moves. When Nigeria roaring, Africa will definitely roar. To this college, according to the, the, the continent, for example, in Kenya, Innovative volunteerism and looking at innovative financing approaches is already happening. When it comes to ICT, the ICT driven information communication technology within a Bakosa called M Bakosa, mobile a Bakosa, is an opportunity that will create millions of jobs for the youth in the African continent today. Nigeria is currently developing this and across 40 Bakosa countries will be able to have a one stop shop where youth in Zambia, youth in Nigeria, Cameroon, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia, all across the entire African continent can be able to create jobs for we ourselves using this doorway that links diverse actors to the relevant products and service providers along the entire Barbosa, Barbosa chain. But another important aspect of these applic mobile applications is that even how to inform policy decisions, <coughs> in investments in agriculture, in investments in clean energy, because as we speak today, the future is about big data. And the a wide variety of stakeholders that will do so to inform optimal decision making. To which colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, through innovative volunteerism, we have just over two years of achieved remarkable progress. In less than these two years, the Bakosa is starting to change the narrative that we make in Congress. Why are mothers burying their kids because they reach five years because they don't have the nutrition to, to feed them? Why are they sleeping with their top and taking more family? These questions should actually wash up us to action. To this colleague, by following a higher level of time. These examples across the African continent today to fight all this wisdom, this is proper to fight all, that we can be able to do things. We have already started to go with the Bakosa, Nigeria, and all African countries. We are witnessing the effectiveness of innovative volunteerism. We resolve to redouble our efforts to learn from the past experiences of what this group of experience that we must be able to resolve to redouble our efforts. That we must be able to learn from the experiences that we're talking about today. That we must be able to refine our action to apply innovative volunteerism effectively. English colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> who let us learn from the hard work in spirit of and we demonstrate the true spirit of innovative volunteerism. That selflessness and politicism is the best way to move forward. Hey, my intelligent 
Fadilat Abdurrahim to give us our remarks. You're welcome. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please permit me to stand on the existing uh, protocol. I bring the uh, greetings from the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Budget and National Planning, who would have loved to be here in person today, considering the importance of this occasion, but for exigencies of duties, he couldn't make it and he has asked me to represent uh, him. And I have his remarks, so permit me to take his remarks as it is. I am delighted to be here with you today at this important program of the first Ebonosa Nigeria Food Security and Climate Resilience Day. I welcome you all to this commemorative event. I strongly believe commemoration of a day like this will give all the relevant stakeholders the opportunity to showcase progress made in bridging policy and operational gaps towards climate proving and maximizing productivity of food systems. Ebofusa, as we might be aware, is the first inclusive pan-African policy framework and implementation platform expected to provide solution space that brings together key stakeholders and actors along the entire Ebofusa ever-driven agriculture value chain. Let me state that since it was launched last year, giant strides have been made. The membership drive and the mobilization process amongst government, the private sector, academia, development partners, non-governmental organizations, farmers, the farmers association was vigorously pursued so that currently the membership strength, membership strength is very robust. It's above 3,000 now. To achieve food security and environmental sustainability, policies and institutions are needed to enhance the ability of individuals, household, production systems to recover from the impact of shocks and stresses on the agriculture sector, occasioned by changing climate. As such, tackling food insecurity and achieving environmental sustainability have been a priority of the present administration as showcased in the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan 2017 and 2020. Agriculture and food security is one of the key execution priorities to achieve the objectives of the plan. The government is convinced that investment in agriculture can guarantee food security. As such, the green alternative has been identified as one of the agricultural promotion policies to meet food security goals of the government. Ladies and gentlemen, it is also very pertinent to state that in the area of environmental sustainability, the plan intends to address some of the most pressing issues through afforestation, tackling sustainable, tackling climate change, and better environmental, better environmental management to support sustainable development. On this note, let me urge the relevant stakeholders to, through partnership and collaboration, come up with strategies to implement the provisions of the plan in order to achieve its objective of food security and climate resilience. Let me commend and appreciate the United Nations Environment Zona Office, Nairobi, Kenya, and particularly the Ecofasa Coordinator, Dr. Richard Onan, for the support towards the social, economic, and sustainable development of the country and Africa as a whole. His unflinching belief in the success of the program 
an unrelenting push on the executive and the secretariat to do more is quite appreciated. Thank you so much. On this note, I wish you all a wonderful celebration. Thank you for your attention. Our distinguished ladies and gentlemen, so invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to quickly to call to, to the podium uh, Dr. Tafa is uh, the director of climate change, the Minister of Environment, representing the Minister of Environment. Let me just start by acknowledging my dear brother, the indefatigable uh, Dr. Richard Muna, who we were in uh, born together, and uh, I was thinking he should be back home now, taking some rest, but he's, he's already with us here in Abuja. This is just to show you our commitment and determination to the success of this event. I don't have a prepared speech because I don't want to stop us from taking tea. I can see uh, on the program is written that organic tea. So I'm wondering what that kind of tea will be. So I will not take much of our time so that we test that tea. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Honorable Minister of Environment, likewise the whole management of the ministry, including the permanent secretary, and the directors are deeply appreciative of this uh, program because we see it as an extension of the activities of the ministry. First and foremost, as we all know, we have this uh, omnibus document that we call the Nationally Determined Contribution, of which the agricultural sector is the key emitter of greenhouse gases especially here in Nigeria. Why is it so? Because of our increase in population, because of our agricultural activity, and a lot of things that associated around that. The studies that was done and the data that we collected all through has put the agri sector as the leading emitter of greenhouse gases in Nigeria. Therefore, to combat this and to enable Nigeria meet the commitment which Mr. President signed for us. We welcome the initiative of the Abafosa. When Richard came to the ministry, by then, the then uh, Minister of Environment, Amina Mohammed, who is currently the, DG, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, she warmly received you and indicated that this is a fantastic program which we should support. Since, and since then, we have not looked back. We have been part and parcel of the assembly. We have designated a national focal person in the ministry, and we have been working very collaboratively with the Bafos. It will also interest you, and I think my sister uh, will collaborate that, that if you look at the budget of the Department of Climate Change for this year, we have uh, designated an activity on a buffer. <laughs> with the support of the Hadja in the national planning, we were able to entrench it into the budget. The whole idea is this forum and the subsequent ones should really come up with activities in line with the presentation that was made by Richard for us to scale up the budgetary allocation for the several activities that is before us. I, it gladdens my mind when he did say that when Nigeria rouse, the whole Africa also rouse. Yes. Nigeria never takes last. We will forever be leading in this continent and we will use this platform of Obama since we are making this history today to venture forward to ensure that we create an enabling environment 
for the participation of private sector in this endeavor. Some years back, when issues of climate change came on board, it was seen as a doom, a catastrophe. But going forward with the various knowledgeable individuals and experts that have been putting heads together, is now seen as an opportunity. Climate change has provided an opportunity for us to move towards a carbon intensive trajectory to a low carbon uh, development pathway. Through that, it's going to enhance our GDP, it's going to enhance our livelihoods, it's going to enhance our health, it's going to also help us stabilize <coughs> security in this country. When we are able to feed ourselves, certainly the resistance will come down. So we welcome this uh, initiative and we want to assure you on behalf of the management of the ministry that we are 100%, even more than 100% in the support of this. With these few remarks, I want to appreciate every one of us at this time. Thank you very much. And an AGM Central Manager in charge of um, uh, marine and ocean activities for ecosystems in uh, New Zealand and whatever. Uh, in IMED, uh, we develop a number of programs, uh, particularly those that relate to this uh, forum, the agrometeorological uh, bullet chain. Uh, that bulletin is intended to help farmers, especially our rural farmers, uh, to know uh, the various parameters that influence uh, their cropping and their uh, harvest uh, activities. Uh, NAMED has the capacity to capture data across the country in terms of um, temperature, rainfall, humidity, soil moisture. And I think these are all important parameters for the farmer. Uh, we are able to capture the data, analyze, and then process them and advise the farmers on, say, the onset of rains, uh, succession periods, so that the farmer can, right at the beginning of the farming season, plan and get prepared for maximum uh, harvest. Uh, this is what we do at NIMED and we are at uh, very, very well presented at the COP that just ended in Bonn. Uh, the Director General led us to the conference and uh, we are amazed really as to the volume of knowledge that we took away so that we can be able to add on to whatever uh, we are doing at NIMED. And uh, in the case of adaptation, example, <coughs> particularly, we feel most of our products uh, can be used very well to address issues of uh, climate change and weather variability, especially uh, with regards to agricultural activities. We have other products like the climate review that address other issues. But uh, as, for, as far as the relevance of our bulletin, the agreement bulletin is concerned, we believe uh, that bulletin, which we have copies of and will be displayed outside, uh, has the potential to adapt, to, to address issues of adaptation, uh, improve agricultural land and water management, accelerate uptake of climate and smart, climate smart agriculture, which I think is uh, one of the things we have seen, uh, reduce the impact of climate related shocks through risk management, strengthen knowledge and systems to target climate action, Integrate resilience and agricultural policy decisions 
influence planning process and implement investment. Uh, the tool and the agreement bulletin uh, can also be a guide on mitigation actions to limit the magnitude or range of long term climate change. These are some of the things we do, and uh, uh, at the exhibition time, we will display some of the products so that uh, we can interact with Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Welcome. Perfect. So, right now, we I think we'll have to go stretch ourselves, you know, and then come back for the second half of the 90 minutes game that we have. Okay. 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 So you added values from your farm. Yes. So what we're going to do here is bring about this ton equipment that will reduce your time and increase your productivity and add value to your business. Okay. So that is where we finish. Okay. And to make this easy for all of us, mm. one of the easiest ways is to participate in the program we are trying to bring up sometimes next year. Next year? But as we are developing, as we are contributing to addressing a bigger problem for the country and the country, and being so what of many things, so many people are benefiting. That's the answer. How is that possible for a company to decide to sell? Don't you think that you can be mentored in this technology? Does it build up the capacity? I think we will be integrated into the one-stop shop. So that if a kid is in Kanu State, in Benin State, in Kanu State, it doesn't need to come from a good education. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. the method depends on that. Yeah. So now, that's yeah. the focus on agro industrialization. Yeah. People understand the reason why these things are important is their dislocation. Yeah. Yeah. This is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. One card can step up. Can I get you a card? Thank you. No, I'm just exhausted. Yeah, but this is very crucial. Like, so I'll get another one for you. Yeah, get it because I'll okay. get it. Go get it. The, the president is a very active guy. I'll get one. Yeah, he's a, he's a very, very active, active guy. Excellent.
Agriculture will come from information communication technology. The solutions of agriculture will come from environment. The solutions of agriculture will come from industrialization. But environment overarchingly is a solution to agriculture because if you don't protect nature, you will not be able to have the foundation that agriculture can function. What we call ecosystem services, for example, bees produce bees pollinate 75 percent of the food we depend on and therefore if you are able to have a striving agricultural driven economy you must be able to add value and this is still a nature based action because it is solar it is nature that provides sun so if you can turn that sun to add value to your cassava that is produced to dry the vegetables that still is not enough for all these things to happen you need to connect them to the market and you need to use information communication technology and all these happening must have inclusive policy frameworks and that is what the ecosystem based adaptation provides for Nigeria and for Africa that connecting the dots those who are dealing with information communication technology NGOs, civil societies, private sector, individual citizens, media policy makers, international development organizations, youth, women group can come together and get within the agro value chain at different points, whether it is producing on the farm, transportation to the market, all these things done in an inclusive way is what is needed now as enshrined in section 5 of the Climate Change Paris Agreement, which says state and non-state actors are the ingredients to drive transformational climate action. Storage facility has always been a problem, sir. What is the organization doing to cope with that? As I said, the UN environment, in collaboration with the African Union, in July 2005, came together and created this framework called the Ecosystem Based Adaptation for Food Security Assembly across Africa. And today, 40 countries have actually domesticated this within their countries. And that is why today we are celebrating the first anniversary of the Nigerian Ecosystem Based Adaptation for Food Security Assembly National Brand. And the intent is not just to deal with post harvest losses and in a silo, because the continent, because of silos, have been losing more than gaining. And this framework helps to connect the dots so that if you have those who are dealing with the production of biodegradable bags, you can connect them to those who are producing and don't have an opportunity to be able to have those opportunities. If you are, have people who are producing and having heavy polish, you can connect them with clean energy so that the clean energy suppliers can be able to supply them with solar. You can connect them with micro-financial institutions. So Ebavosa is already doing this and all these things are here with us and already working across countries in the continent. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now we need to export. Any country that refuses to export, your GDP cannot improve. So the area of value addition is where we even concentrate. Nigeria has upskill in the area of production now. So we need area of value addition to whatever we are producing, inclusively. All right. Thank you very much.
everybody is, is uh, invited. And it was that kind of program. We discovered farmers are there. You can see the area of value addition of their provision. The rural farmers, we call them that there is a pilot scheme coming between Nysel and Embafosa using a pilot scheme. Uh, with cassava quality. Those who are getting involved, they form to foster, they form to cooperate. From there, we reach into the grassroots in rural farmers, getting across. It does have them to follow the process. You know, you cannot plant. The plant doesn't, you can't do it in the city. It has to be done in the rural So, they are the ones who will get involved to operationalize the real particle on the field.